Chris Renault on St. Simon's Island. Are you excited to be with us this morning? Amen. Yes, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. We are excited. We are expectant. We have been praying for you this morning. So we are excited about what God's going to do. So if you would just pray with me. Holy Spirit, we welcome you in this place. We thank you, Lord, that you are already here in our midst, that you promise that you inhabit your, the praises of your people. So we are thankful for that promise, God, and we just pray that you are glorified and lifted high in this place and in our hearts today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's worship together. If you've been walking the same old road for miles and miles, if you've been hearing the same old voice of the same old lies If you've been trying to fill the same old holes inside There's a better life Yeah, there's a better life If you got pain, he's a pain taker Search for the light of day in the dead of night. We've all found ourselves worn out from the same old fight. And we've all run the things we know just ain't right. When there's a better life, yeah, there's a better life. If you've got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. Well, if you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. Sing if you can feel it, if you believe it. If you believe it this morning, sing this. If you believe it, if you receive it. If you can feel it, somebody testify. If you believe it, sing. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify. Oh, oh, to him I 
desperate for you, Lord.
but in this moment to think of the woman with the issue of blood. She had the issue of blood and at that time it was against law to go to be around others. But she went because she knew, she went after the Lord because she knew just one touch of Him, she would have all that she needs. And I wanna ask you this morning, do you know that? Just one touch of the Lord is all that we need. And in this moment, all I can think is in your lives, there are things that no one knows about. There are things that you don't even understand, that you think no one else knows about, and possibly no one else could know about that. But I know someone, the God, our Savior, who knows, who sees, who cares, and who wants to carry your burden. And all he wants is a face saying, God, I'm desperate for you. God, I'm lost without you, Lord. We declare we are desperate for you, God. God, we need a new touch, a fresh anointing, a fresh fire to fall, God, because our old anointing is not good enough. God, the touch we had from you last year is not enough, God. We need more of you, Jesus, more of you in our lives, more of your power working in and through because we know our God is the God of the impossible, amen? And he says, if you believe it, then you will receive. And I just want to encourage you all. I encourage myself to get back to that heart of desperation, saying that, God, I'm nothing without you. Going day in and day out of life, it, it seems okay. Like, God, I've got this. But we are desperate for him, desperate for a new touch. Even if we are okay, we are desperate for him. Let's sing this song from the heart of, or from our heart of hearts and truly mean, God, I am desperate for you. Lord, whatever you want to do today, whatever your will is, God, we want your will in this place. We want your will in our lives. We want your will in this world, Jesus. Your kingdom come, your will be done. So I encourage you, let's just sing this together. Let's sing with our hands lifted if, if you feel like it. And sing, Jesus, I am desperate for you, desperate for a new touch. God, I'm lost without you, lost without your direction in our lives. Thank you, Jesus. You never leave us. You never forsake us. And like the woman with the issue of blood, Lord, we are searching. We are pushing through the crowds to get to you just for one touch, just for one touch so we will be made whole. Thank you, Jesus. We're desperate for you. Let's sing it together.
Stand before the Lord this morning. I feel like the Lord would say that if you're weary today, if you're thirsty, He is here to fill you. He is here to fill you to overflowing. He's here to fill you with a water that you will never thirst again. If you're tired, if you feel stripped, if you feel like you've just gone as far as you can go, the Lord is here to strengthen you today. If you're here and you're sick, the Lord is here to heal you. If you're here today and you're brokenhearted, the Lord is here to mend your heart. If you're here confused today, He is not the author of confusion, but He is the author of clarity. He is the author of truth. If you're here today, it's okay because the Lord says He wants to love you and bring clarity to your mind today. If you will, just, just raise your hands to the Lord this morning. Just stretch out your hands this morning to Him. I feel like the Lord is speaking to someone this morning. I feel like the Lord wants to love on somebody this morning. Father, you know, you know which, what each one of us need today, Lord. God, we stretch out our hands to you, Father, and we say that we are desperate for you. Lord, we are weak without you. We are sick without you. We are brokenhearted without you, Lord. Father, pour out your spirit today upon each one today. God, we came today to be filled with your presence. We came to be healed today with your healing power. Father, we need you. We are desperate for you. We are desperate for you. We are desperate for you, Lord. We're hungry and we're thirsty for your power. We're hungry and thirsty for your strength. We need you, Father. Perfect Lamb of God, we need you. Every hour, we need you, Lord. We need you, Jesus. We need you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for all the modern things. We thank you for digital sound. We thank you for drums and guitar. We thank you for all these things. But, Lord, if they take us away from your presence, God, may we lay them down today and come back to the basics of who you are, and we worship you today, God. We don't have to have all these things to bring us into your presence because you said where two or three gathered, you were there in the midst. Lord, you said where we praise and lift up your name, Lord, you inhabit the praises of your people. So, Father, we come today to praise you. We come today to worship you. We come today to lift up the name of Jesus Christ in this place today. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Just give him praise right now, church. Give him praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Let's stay in an attitude of prayer. Or standing here worshiping and God took my eyes to little Liza little Liza down here with her hands raised with her eyes turned up she was not playing she was worshiping Jesus the Holy Spirit is all over that child right now and God's like Crystal that's what I want just come to me as a little child just lift your hands and worship in me Forget about the sound systems messed up and the microphones. and Just forget about that because the reason you're here is to worship me like Liza is worshiping me. So I challenge all of us today to come to God as a child and just be pure before him and just lay it all at his feet and just give everything to him and let our whole being worship him from our head to our toes. Just put it all aside, all our concerns. 
So in Psalms 107, 19 and 20, it says, Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. He sent his word and he healed them. He delivered them from their destructions. So, Father, we come to you this morning. God, we stand on your word, Lord. When you gave me the scripture this morning, I had no idea of the trouble we were going to have with the sound system. But you knew, God. So we come to you, God. We lift up the needs of the bulletin. God, we lift up Richard Heckel, Rita Gull, and Nancy Tatum. God, they need healing this morning. So, God, we just bring the physical healing that's needed to you, Father. God, we need financial deliverance that's needed in families, Lord. God, relationships restored, Father. We just come to you this morning, and God, we just lay it all at your feet. We just give everything to you, every concern, every desire, God, and we just trust you. And Father, as Mike comes to bring your word, God, I pray that you will just anoint him with a triple anointing this morning because Satan, you are defeated. The distractions you've tried to bring this morning are not going to work. So in the name of Jesus, this service is just anointed from top to bottom. Everyone here is anointed in Jesus' name. And God, I thank you for your anointing. I thank you that we are going to be changed today in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord is so good. And I apologize. It's just His presence is so strong in this place that I, I just can't speak. some of the actually I know of one of the greatest revivals that ever happened in this country was the Azuzu arrivals with Bishop Paul Morton and it all started with a piano and a song and people that were desperate desperate for him and it is a moment of repentance because you cannot have revival without repentance. So just for another moment, just, just if you don't mind, Jordan, sing it again for me. And if, if everyone here, and Pastor, I hope this is okay. But if everyone would just bow your head and close your eyes just for a moment. No one looking around. And just... Think about the goodness of God. Maybe there's someone here that just, you just need to unload, like Miss Crystal was saying, you just need to unload what's on your heart. Maybe you just need to pour out and tell God how good He is, how good He's been to you, because He's been so good to me. Maybe you just need to, there's something in your life that you need, and maybe you need a healing financials, whatever it is. He is in this place. His anointing is heavier than I've ever felt it before in my life. So if you need something, now is the time. So as Jordan sings, like Pastor was saying, just love on God for a moment. Just love on Christ. We, we, like Pastor, we don't need no drums. We don't, oh, we give me Jesus. I don't need no bass guitar. I don't need no guitar. So I don't need none of that. Give me Christ. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. God is awesome. I woke up this morning with a, some words on my mind, and the Lord kept stirring them and stirring them in my, in my soul. As a public profession of your faith, those are the words you kept speaking to me over and over again this morning. As a public profession of your faith, I know that's normally done in baptismals and, you know, you say a public profession of your faith in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, you are baptized. But I started thinking about those words, as a public profession of your faith. We think of profession and we think of something that we're proud of, something that we do, a job. But in the Word of God, it actually means a declaration. Something that you're declaring. You're declaring that you have faith in Jesus Christ. You are declaring that He is your Lord and Savior. As a public profession of your faith. And in Hebrews 10, 23, oh, the Lord led me here this morning. And it talks about the profession of your faith. It will not waver. It shall not waver. And it says in parentheses right next to it, because he has been faithful to you. Do you know what Christ desires? You know, I, I was thinking about that this morning. I was thinking about everything in this world that we desire. We look at, we, we want this and we want that and we want all of this. But you know what Christ desires? You. Mm. The creators of the universe. The man that created, the person that created the heavens and the earth. The one that created me and you and everything that's, that we're sitting around. Everything that's, that's sitting here, he created. And he is desperate for you. As a public profession of my faith, Lord, I lift you high. I'm not ashamed. I am not ashamed. You know, so many people ask you, what is your profession? Profession, And you tell them so proudly, I am this, I am that. How many times have people asked you about your faith and you've gone silent? The profession of your faith shall not be waived, shall not waver. It shall not waver. Amen. That should be our prayer today. Lord, don't let my faith waver. Allow me to profess it whenever there is a time, whenever there is a moment that I can, I can raise you high, that I can say your name proudly, that I serve the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Let there be a moment. Every day we should wake up with that saying, Lord, I'm ready to profess my faith to you today. I am ready to do that today. Send someone in my path to where I can say that my Lord and Savior is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the Creator oh, of heaven and earth. Hallelujah. That should be our daily prayer. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I so much appreciate the obedience of the Lord. We have, we, we, we have an agenda. We have a, a little, I don't know if you want to call it a program, Elder Denny. We, we have kind of a guideline that we go down each Sunday. But you know what? Nothing is better than when God kind of mixes that up and says, I've got something else I need to mix in here. And we've got to be sensitive to that, and we've got to follow through with it, Pastor Tim. And so thank you for obeying, obeying the Lord. As you notice, things are a little different on the platform this morning. And uh, we're using some, some mics that's been around for a few years. And uh, we're doing things a little old school. But you know what? God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we serve the same God. Thank God for modern technology, but thank God we don't allow it to hold us back. Uh, we pray this morning, when we have to do without the modern things, I pray that it will push us closer to Him. Because we are desperate for Him. When everything else fails, literally, when everything else fails... When, when we get a bad medical report, when we get bad news, when things don't go our way, one thing we can count on is for sure, and that is Jesus Christ. Aren't you glad? Amen. 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 I am too. I am too. Praise God. Praise God.
And uh, I want to thank them for their service and for their time, for their dedication and loyalty to the Lord. Give them a hand this morning. But they, they, they'll be signing autographed autograph after, after, excuse me. Or bringing the casserole. For the, or, or what? For, or bringing the casserole. Bring the, I'd vote for the casserole. Oh, okay. uh, they've decided to, to go to a semi-retirement uh, kind of a state, and, uh, but they want to help, still help when they can. So we just want to bless Miss Carolyn and Miss Ann as, as they kind of step aside and let someone else kind of step in here and, and head up the Helping Hands ministry. But... Uh, I'm just so thankful for, for God's hand through them, uh, so tender and so merciful and gracious and, and the giving of their time. just want to thank you both today and everybody that works with you. They still want to be a part of it, but they want somebody else to step in to kind of head it up. So you pray about that. Amen. God bless you. We love you. Amen. Amen. Are you ready for the word this morning? Yeah. Amen. we in the book of James. And James, is a, James has a way of, of teaching us the word. James has a way of teaching us God's ways. And it's been a blessing. Week one, we, we talked about trials and temptations Week two, we talked about hearing and doing. Last week was part three, and Josh was here, uh, and J Josh preached so eloquently and talked about partiality and favoritism. Today will be part four, and we're going to be getting into a topic that's one of my favorite topics of the entire Bible. It's one of the hardest, but it's my favorite. But first, let's read out of James 1.17. It's our focus, our key scripture during this series and then we'll pray and get into what I believe God wants to say today. Amen. James 1.17 says this, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Father, I thank you for your word. Thank you for the book of James. Thank you, God, that, that you give us keys that we can have a better life. That, Lord, as we take these keys and learn of them and apply them to our life, practical things that we, can, that we can use to change our lives, God, it causes our life to be better. It pushes us closer to you. So, Lord, I thank you that today, as we delve into the book of James further, Lord, in, in chapter 2, Lord, that you will just show us your ways. Thank you, Father, that you love us today and that you speak to us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Last month, as many of you know, uh, I have a pacemaker and defibrillator. I was finally talked into it uh, two years ago this month, as a matter of fact, and um, something I didn't, didn't really have on my schedule to do. But at any rate, uh, had that done two years ago. Well, since they had that done, I'm supposed to check in with the doctor every six months. And um, uh, I have a wife that pretty much makes it her priority to make sure I, I attend that, that meeting. And so uh, I was there in January, I believe it was, and so my six months would have been July, and I had something come up, and so I called the doctor and told him I couldn't make the appointment that day, uh, or that, that the following day, I called the day before, and uh, they said, well, when you, can you come in, can you come in in August, and I said, yeah, we'll say August, and so that was this past uh, Tuesday. Well, I had an FCMI meeting, I had a great excuse, I had an FCMI meeting in Statesboro, and had men go with me to meet with other pastors, and and I told them that morning, I said, I probably need to be back by 2.45. I'm supposed to be at the doctor to get, get my check up. And I said, but you know what? If, if, if we think we can't be back, I'll just call them and postpone it. And Crystal caught uh, kind of me saying that, and she said, you need to be there. So I kept my appointment. I was there 2.45 last Tuesday. And you heard me say before, when the doctor walks in, when, when Dr. Mitchell Jones walks in, he just smiles and shakes his head. He said, how are you doing? I said, I'm great, doctor. How are you doing? He said, I'm good. And, and they, they hooked me up and, you know, did the readout of what this thing has done. And he said, you've not had any problems or anything? I said, no, not at all. See, what, what's, what's interesting is that when I was 18 years old, they saw that my heart was in such bad shape, the heart of a 90-year-old man, they said, with not only that, but it was scars of heart attacks. And that's the reason they gave me three to five years to live because part of my heart muscle was dead and wasn't working. And, and so that's why I was given three to five years to live when I was 18. And so... 
Uh, so every time he walks in the room, his dad was my doctor until he passed away. And now his son, Dr. Mitchell Jones, is my doctor. And uh, so, so he said, what, 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 well, what I was going to tell you first was that the picture of my heart still looks the same as it did when I was 18. So I'm here today, but, but they still see my heart in the awful bad condition that it was then. Y'all can tell my heart's in really bad shape, can't you? And so, so the doctor sees it on the screen and sees this bad heart that's still, part of it's still working and pumping, but it's not supposed to be that way. That's the reason they wanted to put this in. Uh, that, that way they'd have a little insurance that, that if something were to happen, some, you know, I'd have a, 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 another life. I'd have an extra life, more life. Um, and so I listened to the doctor, and, 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 and he said, well, don't you, don't you ever get short of breath? I said, no, I never do. He shook his head again. He said, well, how active are you? And I said, well, I'm pretty active, pretty active. I'm, I only know one speed, and that's on. And um, so I walked away with, a, with, a, with, with another point behind me. He said, see you in six months. And uh, I said, Merry Christmas. And so, so I left. But see, we, we take things in our life, and if we're not careful without our eyes on Jesus Christ. See, I, I was so naive and, and little, um, I guess, energetic when I was 18, so that's kind of carried over to me now, nearly 52 years old, that I don't let what the doctor says on the screen be the map to my future. Because I, I have a God that, that can go beyond what the doctor sees on the screen. And so I believe that we all have things in our life that if we're not careful, we, we, let, we let the readout be our map to our future destiny, rather than allowing God to be the map to our destiny. Because, because the devil does a good job at painting things in a way that it will be a distraction to us. It'll be a, it'll be a way of taking our focus on where we're supposed to be to where we don't quite do all that we're supposed to do because we see this is the picture here. And this is what you need to go by. The topic I want to talk about today is faith. Faith. Faith is powerful. Faith is life-changing. If we use the Webster Dictionary to define faith, it says this, a firm belief in something for which there's no proof. I like that definition. Web Webster did good. A firm belief, not just a belief, but a firm belief in something for which there's no proof. There is no proof that I should be standing here today. There's no proof that maybe you should be here today. There are circumstances that maybe should have taken us out a long time ago. But we're here. The Bible says faith is, in Hebrews 11.1, 1, the, the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. It's interesting that I had someone tell me the other day they had no idea that I was going to be talking about faith, but they said that, Pastor, why, why should we have faith if we already have the answer? I said, you know what? That, that's, that's correct. When we have the answer, when, when, we have, when we can touch that thing, when we know that we've got it, faith is not required any longer. Faith is only required when we're hoping for something that we've not yet seen. When we're hoping, when we're striving for something that, that we really want, but it's, maybe, maybe sometimes it's a little impossible. It, it's beyond our ability to touch that's when we need faith and faith in God and that faith I believe if we understand the importance of it and and I want to not only talk about faith today but let you know how you can acquire that type of faith it will change your life from this moment forward tomorrow will be a different day before uh, for you because you will see things much uh, much greater than what you actually see them with your physical eyes. You will see that there's more to your life than what you can physically touch or see. There's nothing wrong with having, having goals in life and basing them on your education and, and your abilities and, and all these type of things, but those are things that you can accomplish without faith. But it's the things that we want to accomplish that requires faith. Those things are the things that God wants us to learn about and learn how to acquire that faith through the power of Jesus Christ, through the Word of God, that we can accomplish even those impossible things. And I believe that God has those things for each one of us. There are greater things that we can do. There are greater blessings in your life, as we'll talk about in just a moment, that God wants to bring about in your life through the power of faith. 
And so there'll be times in your life, there'll be times in my life, there'll be major things that we're praying for and hoping for that will require faith to achieve it. Because there's things that we can't see, there are things that we can't touch. But we've got to know that God is always trustworthy. God is always trustworthy and faithful. Pastor Tim said a while ago, God is always faithful. He's always faithful to bring about those things in our life that he has promised us. The Word of God is full of promises. And there's not one single promise that he will not fulfill if we have faith in him to see it come about. We can have faith in him and we can know that it will be done. Did you know that faith is necessary? Faith is necessary for us to receive what God wants us to have. We've got to have faith. I can prove that in the Word of God. Faith is even necessary for our salvation. We cannot have salvation without faith. So if we've got to have salvation for four, you say, well, salvation is easy because God said I could have it. <laughs> Did you just realize what I said you said? Yeah, we've got to have faith for salvation. It's so easy to do that, but why can't we believe for the greater things? It's the same faith. It's the same faith. Yeah. Ephesians 2, 8, the first part of that verse says, for by grace you have been saved through what? Faith. And then in Hebrews eleven six 6 says, Without faith, it is impossible to please God. We've got to have faith. We've got to have faith. So there are some ways that we can test our faith. I can test my faith by some things that I'm going to give you today. And if you want to just take notes and, and maybe apply these to your life, there are ways that we can test our faith. The first one is faith is proven by works. Faith is proven by works. James 2.17 says, Thus also faith by itself is if it does not have works, is dead. Now, what do you think we can do with dead faith? You can have dead faith, but it's not going to do anything. The Bible says that without works, our faith is dead. The dead root system of a garden is not going to produce fruit. You say, well, there's roots there, but they're dead. Okay, but there's no fruit coming out of those dead roots. Those strawberries aren't quite as red when they're coming out of a dead plant. They're not coming out of the dead plant. So we've got to have our faith alive. I want my faith alive, don't you? And so we've got to have action to our faith to be able to have live faith, to be able to have faith that will do what God wants it to do. James 2, 15 and 16 says, If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, Depart in peace, in peace, be warmed and filled. In other words, we have somebody that comes in and says, I'm starving, I need some food. And we say, well, I'll pray for you. Go in peace. That's what it's saying. Depart in peace, be warmed and filled. But you don't give them anything. You don't give them the things which are needed for the body. What does it profit? What good is it going to do them to say, I'm going to pray for you. You go ahead and go. Or I could say, you know what? I don't have any food right now, but let's go up to Harris Teeter. And let's get Scott to fill us full of basket and let's take it to your car so you'll have plenty of food. That's the faith that requires works. So we, we, we have to put feet to our faith. We've got to put action to our faith. I like what Elder Roth said last week. He said, when somebody comes up to me and asks for prayer, he said, I've learned that sometimes I forget. Yeah, I'll pray for you. And then you leave. The next time you see him, it's like, oh, my goodness, I was supposed to be praying for you. I told you I'd pray. Rather than doing that, say, will you pray for me? Do like Kathy Dart does take hands and say let's pray right now you want prayer bless God let's pray right now Lord in Jesus name what they have need of bring it about and have enough faith to where if you could do anything about it if you can encourage it in any way physically do it amen the second way to test your faith is this faith pursues God if God has everything if his if he has the ability to do everything then why not pursue the one that has everything in his hands? We need to pursue God. We need to pursue the God that supplies every good and perfect gift, as it says in James 1.17. If he supplies every good and perfect gift, the Bible does not lie. If he supplies all these things, everything that we need, every good and perfect gift, then shouldn't we pursue the God of all of these things? You say, well, I've got all that I need. I don't really need anything else. Well, praise God, I'm going to be first in line. I need everything that God has for me. Amen? Amen? And if you want to leave any over, then maybe we could divvy it up among us. 
but I need everything that God has for me. And I believe that we all do. That's why we're here today is to receive everything that God has. But faith pursues God because he has all the answers. I don't have all the answers, but I know somebody that does. Let me put you in contact with him. Amen? And so he can be our source of faith, and he can cause anything to happen. Anything can happen by the power of God. James 2.19 says, you believe that there is one God. That's good. You do well, James says. But even the demons believe and tremble. See, it's not good enough just to believe God. God, God is God. We, we have a lot of people on television today that say, I want to thank God. You know what? I thank, the, I thank them for that statement. But it goes much deeper than that. It goes beyond words. We actually have to pursue God. I thank God that I got this trophy. Yeah, do you realize how you got that trophy? Do you realize that it was by the hand of God that he calls you to, to be able to accept that and to have the ability to perform like you did? See, it all boils down to God wanting to have a relationship with you. That's what it all boils down to. Sometimes we see God as Santa Claus. We, when we need something, we go to him and say, uh, will you put this on my list, God? I, I, I need this from Sam's. And, and if you will have that delivered tomorrow morning. Sometimes we go to God like that rather than saying, God, I want to have a relationship with you. And out of my relationship, that's why Matthew said, seek first the kingdom of God. And then all these other things will be added. It doesn't matter what it is. But it's the relationship with God. Did you know that if, if God, if we come to God without a relationship with him, God, God can withhold that thing in your life to cause you to come to him he's got it he has it he has access to it and it maybe has your name on it but you know what god wants to first and foremost have a relationship with us and out of that relationship be able to bless us with everything every good and perfect gift there's nothing that the father god wants to withhold from you no no thing but we must first have a relationship with him we must first what pursue God. That's got to be our first, our first priority is pursuing God. Have faith in God and, and to pursue Him, and that will cause us to have the action that we talked about a while ago. But God wants to have a relationship with us. And the third way that we can test our faith is that our, realize that our faith in God has no limits. Our faith in God has no limits. Many times we put, a, we put a ceiling on what we feel like God can do. Well, God, if you can do this thing, if, I know this is, this is really stretching it. This is really going a long way. But, God, if you could just cause this to happen, then, wow, that will be wonderful. I don't think we should put any limits on God because the Bible says that all things are possible with God. Nothing is impossible. Now, the last time I checked, nothing means no thing. There is nothing under the sun or above the sun or in the sun or around the sun that will cause anything to be impossible with God. That means all things, everything is possible with God. And so if we truly believe that, then we know that there is no limits. There is no cap on what God can do. There is no cap. There is no ceiling. There is nothing. We can just take that off and realize that, you know what? This thing that I've been praying for is limiting God. Why pray for my son to be saved when the whole family can be saved? Why pray for, for this blessing in my life that I need so much? Why not pray for this whole thing to be affected by God's hand? Many times we limit our prayers to what we, God, I, I know I only have so many points to use this month, so I want to use it in the right area. Uh, you know, we just limit God. It's strange how we do that. We want to be conservative. <laughs> God is not a conservative God. He, he's an abundant God. He, he's, he's a wise God, but he's a God of abundance exceedingly exceedingly he wants our joy to be exceeding he wants everything in our life to be exceeding abundant there is an overflow of god that god wants i mean who who in the world would waste gold to pave a street with who in the world would waste pearls to hang it on a gate that means he's got so much of gold and pearls that he said okay you know what guys go ahead and pave the street with it i've got so much over here and these guys don't have enough faith to receive it, so we'll just pay the streets with it. And when they get right with me and they pursue me like they're supposed to, then I'm going to drop a little gold on them too. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible with God. How big is your faith? God's bigger than that. What can you believe for? God is bigger than that. What do you have need of? God is bigger than that. There's no limit to what God has. James is referring to Abraham. We all know Abraham. 
In verse 22, we see that James is referring to Abraham. Abraham had to do something that was far beyond his ability to do. How could Abraham do such things? How could Abraham take his son, Isaac, that he loved so much, and God speaks to him saying, go lay Isaac on the altar and sacrifice him to me? Now, I mean, sometimes if, if we were to have an instruction that difficult, we're going to go to somebody for a second opinion. I think I heard God, but I think I had Mexican, and it was a little bit too hot, and the next day I was in bad shape. I'm sure I did not hear God say what I thought I heard him say. Surely he didn't tell me to take my own son and to lay him on the altar. There's no way that God would, because, my goodness, Abraham says, God's promised me all these sons and daughters, all these all these things, and how, why would he take this away from me if he's promised me all these things? See how we can justify? We can talk ourselves right out of God's blessing? And if Abraham had not gone through with the obedience to God, he would not have been blessed the way that he was blessed and is being blessed today. Abraham is still being blessed. He's in heaven, but he's being blessed. How can, how can Abraham have seen the fulfillment of God's promises without first being obedient to lay down to God's instruction. And so we see in James 2.22, James again is referring to Abraham. He says, do you see that faith was working together with Abraham's works? So Abraham had faith, and it was working together with his works, and by works, faith was made perfect. So Abraham took the word of God, the literal word of God. Couldn't this mean something else? Let me see. Or does it literally mean what you mean it means, God? He took the word of God, his faith that he had, combined with the works, and by the works of faith, God made it perfect. It was the actions working together with that faith that made perfect what he did. See, Abraham didn't have to kill a son after all. But he was willing to be obedient to God. See, many times God will test you and the very thing that means the most to you, to lay it down so that he can bless you with more. Did you catch that? Many times God is asking for us something. You're saying, well, God, you promised this thing to me. You, you promised my son and daughter to me. You promised this financial blessing to me. You promised me this property. You promised me this house. You promised me whatever it is in your life that means the most to you. You promised this to me. See, that's why giving to God is so important. You promised this to me. Why would I let it go? Why would I let something go that you promised me with? Surely, God, you're not meaning for me to give this up. And he's saying, son, if you just trust me, you have faith in me, and let that thing go, I've got a whole trailer full of stuff I'm about to bring. They're sitting at the gate with a truck running, but you've got to give this up first before I can give them the word to pull through. See, our blessing many times is based on our one act of obedience. And Abraham was able to see that God was the God of no limits. God was not bound by this little fact that Isaac was a blessing to him. Yes, Isaac was a blessing. But you know what? He had to be willing to lay that down. The most important thing in Abraham's life, he had to be willing to lay it down first. And after he was willing to lay it, not before, God didn't say, well, I know you'll do it anyway. Go ahead and bring it in, guys. No. No. For, for, for most of it, God knew Abraham's heart, but Abraham didn't know Abraham's heart. Abraham had to see how obedient he was to God. Abraham had to be tested for his own good. God already knew. God knew. It wasn't for God to think, well, okay, let me see if he'll pass this one little test here. And if he does, God already knew he'd pass the test. But Abraham had never been have never been tested to that point, to that degree. And when he was tested, he re can you imagine the faith that built in Abraham? Oh, my goodness. He passed the test right when he was about to take his son, as, as God had instructed, and he backed off. God said, no, I see your heart. I see your heart. Now I'm going to send all the blessings, more and more blessings into your life than what you ever imagined. God is the God of no limits. He's a God of no limits, but we've got to trust God. We've got to trust God more than what we trust the circumstances that we see. See, it's, it's easy. Well, I've got faith in God, and we've got one eye open. I've got faith in God, but God, let me see. Hold on, hold on. Uh, hold on, God. Hold on, see. 
Uh, yeah, God, yeah, God, I trust you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hold on. No, no, I'll get back to you tomorrow, God. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, you know, so we, we look out and we think we're basing our faith on what we see. But if we'll just keep our eyes closed and keep our eyes on God, and when God speaks to us, just go ahead and do it. Say, yes, God. Yep. I'm going to go ahead and trust you with this. I'm going to go ahead and do what you've told me to do. See, there have been some things in my life this, in these past few months that God has really tested me in, and, and I was real anxious to say, yes, God, and here I am thinking, what was I thinking? I trusted you, God. Are you sure you told me to do this? Because if not... I'm just about to head somewhere where I don't want to head. I'm just about to face something that I don't want to face. Are you sure, God, you told me? He sitting back there with his eyes crossed just grinning at me. He let me see the picture of him grinning at me. But if we'll just, just go ahead and say, God, I know you're the God of, 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 of unlimited. You're the God of, of everything, and you can cause all these things to pan out just like you call them to. And so how can we have this no limits faith? God wants us to have faith that is no, not limited. God wants us to have the same faith that he did when he spoke to that mountain. The Bible says that we can see it move. How can we have that faith, no limits faith to God? I believe, first of all, the no limits faith steps out. We've got to learn to step out. No limits faith steps out. It steps out. It doesn't step out based on uh, the assurance that it's all going to all work out. Matter of fact, more times than not, the, 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 the points that I've had to step out, it was pretty scary. I just stepped off. <laughs> I'm going to stay back here. I'm fixing to step out all right. Nearly lost my train of thought. See, God wants us to exercise our faith. And what better way to exercise our faith than to step out before we see that that thing's going to come about? That's where trust comes in. That, that no limits faith is going to cause us to step out. That's how we can acquire it. Try it one time. Now, hear the voice of God. Hear, hear that. Now, the devil's not going to tell you to step out. He'll say, no, you just you look at this now. You need to be wise. You, 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 need, to, you need to do this. Well, I believe everything God does is wise. But everything God does is not going to always make sense. <laughs> James 2.21 says this, Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he, when, he, when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? He stepped out and took that step of faith. He didn't know God was going to stop him. He didn't know how it was going to end. For all he knew, that was going to be the end of his son's life. But he stepped out anyway. See, our faith, our no limits faith, we're going to have to step out. And stepping out is not comfortable. Stepping out is not comfortable at all. And matter of fact, it's going to take you out of your comfort zone. You're comfortable staying within a certain realm. You're comfortable staying, I'm comfortable staying in, with, within a certain area. I'm, I'm, I'm okay up to that point. But over that, I'm not really comfortable. So, Lord, you understand that my personality, I want to stay this side of the fence. So, thank you, God, that. I won't have to step too far. You know, I can, I can put my toe to the fence oh, right, right there. I'm, I'm okay there. But many times we say that, don't we? But God's going to cause us to step out. For that unlimited faith, there'll be a stepping out. Faith, Abraham had to step out beyond what he was able to see, to physically touch. How many remember Peter? Peter was in this boat. Everything was great. Everything was good. Yeah, it was rainy. It was stormy. But they, at least they had blankets and they had a little grill to the side there. They had the George Foreman grill. I mean, everything was great there. But then when Jesus comes up and says, okay, dude, I want you to come to me. And Peter says, okay, is there a bridge here that I don't see? How am I going to get over there to you? But Peter said, okay, I'm going to step out of the boat and I'm going to come to you. And that's what Peter did. Those guys are thinking, man, he is dumb. I mean, we're in here eating burgers and he's out walking on the ocean. What's he thinking? So Peter even knew that there was a place that he needed to come to to get out of the comfort zone, to throw off the blanket, and to break the necks of his friends thinking, what is he doing? So sometimes we need to have the attitude of Peter. We've got to get out of the boat. We've got to step out. We've got to do what he's called us to do. That is not easy. Why don't God come up with some easy instructions? 
The second thing we, we need to do is to speak out. No Limits Faith will cause us to speak out, to step out, to speak out. You could tell how much faith by what I say. You could tell how much faith I have by what I say. Well, yeah, this situation is, is not good, and I don't really think it's going to work out. And so, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do this and do that, and I'm going to go ahead and get things lined up because I know this was a dumb thing, and, and I shouldn't have done it. And Mexican food was awful, and, and I, just, I just made a bad decision. You know, so you can tell how much faith I've got by the way I talk. I'm going to speak out. No, you know what? I believe I have full confidence in the Word of God that what he said do, I did, and that God's going to cause everything to work the good for those who love God, and that's a check, and who's called according to a person, a second check. So that's a promise that we have because God said we have it. So we can speak that promise out. We can speak it out. Speak it as though it were. Not speak it as though it, I think it's going to happen. James 2.25 makes reference here to a prostitute that God used to speak into the life of men. Well, does God do that? Well, he did. Even way back then. So James 2.25 uses this example. It says, Likewise, was not Rahab the harlot, prostitute, also justified by works, when she received the messengers, these group of men, they were hiding out, they were scooping out the land. She received these guys into her home along with her family. I think she had brothers and her father and all that. So she received these guys as messengers, it says, and sent them out another way. So God used her to speak into their life to bring, to bring uh, protection to them that they would not have had any other way. God used a prostitute to speak the truth, to speak faith to these men that needed it in a time of trouble. Otherwise, they would have lost their life. Joshua, which is where this happened, Joshua chapter 2, verses 8 and 9 also refers to this story. It says, now before they lay down, she came up to them on the roof. Speaking of, of uh, uh, Rahab, Speak, she, she came up to the roof and said to these men, I know that the Lord has given you the land that the terror of you has fallen on us and that all the inhabitants of the land are faint-hearted because of you. So God gave warning to these men and she spoke out the faith that she saw, that she heard God speaking. There'll be things that God causes you to speak out that you won't understand, much less anybody else. Many times when faith talks, faith is not our way of understanding something. We're not going to be able to figure it out right now. But as we speak that thing out and trust God to bring it about, it will happen just as the word of faith says it will. Has anybody ever experienced that? That you speak something before you realize what you're saying. I've done it many times. And I don't know why I said it. And I said, well, God, I sure hope that was you, what I just said. But God is, he's no limits. No limits faith. And he will cause us to speak out. The, otherwise, the, 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 the word of God would not say that there's power of death and life in the power of the tongue. What you say is important, especially when it's the word of God. When we speak the word of God... There's life and there's death. The power's in the tongue. God wants to use your tongue to speak out what he wants his word spoken. See, speaking out the word of God, faith is risky. It's risky because I've said it and now my reputation's on the line. We've got to bring it back to me. We've got to bring it back to so So if I, if I say it, then I want to make sure it's good. So God, you're going to have to confirm this in me before I say it. So we put stipulations on God. He's already said his word. And then, then we're going to say, well, God, you need to confirm this. And many times, you know, if we need, if we need confirming, God will, when we're growing, he'll, he'll bring that confirmation. But then when we know better, when that word becomes a little harder, a little more difficult to say, God will say, okay, I've given you confirmation before. Now I want to truly test if you're listening to me. Step out and speak my word. So we see that no limits faith steps out. We want to acquire that kind of faith. We step out, we speak out, and the third thing is we act out. We act out. Now, that's not going on a two-year-old tangent. That's, that's acting out. See, my actions will be different when I believe in God's Word versus when I don't believe in God's Word. When I really believe in God's Word, I'm going to smile more. When I really believe in God's Word, I'm going to have a little spring in my step. I'm going to, you know, I'm, I'm, wow, God, you know, I, I don't see this, but you know what? I believe it. I believe it. It's on the way. 
See, Jesus did this. He, he, he acted out. Jesus says, uh, 1 Peter 2, 24, it says that Jesus bore our sins, said himself, Jesus bore our sins in his own body on the tree. So Jesus stepped out. He, he took the action of faith based on his father's instruction. He said, you go die for my people so that they will have life and have life eternal. And so Jesus stepped out. That's the ultimate, that's the ultimate of acting out our faith. But see, we can do that too. Faith says, I can do all things through Christ. So if I act on faith, if I'm acting on faith, then my actions will be different than they will if I don't truly believe that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If I really believe that I can do all things through Christ, then I'm going to do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That doesn't mean that to have extraordinary, unlimited faith, I'm going to pray more, and when it's time for me to do something, they'll ring the doorbell three times, and there'll be a bright light, and then I'll know. So, you know, we can set up these little stipulations. But we can actually step out. When we know that we can do all things through Christ, that means that, God, you just give me the green light. I'm ready. We can be ready to act out, to go forth. Faith says this. My God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. That's faith acting out. Because I already know that everything I have need of, God will supply it. Now, if you have no needs, there's nothing to worry about. But God's just talking to those of us who have needs. And if you have a need today, God said he'll supply it according to his riches and glory. So we need to act out and act like he's going to supply all our needs. We just need to act like it. Act like that we're the son and daughter of the one who owns everything in this universe. Everything from the sun down. And all, I, well, I understand sun is very small compared to some of these others out here. But we can see the sun better. So everything under the sun, as the old saying would go, God owns it all. And he has all of that for you. There's no limit. James 2.26 says, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. God has life for you. So how long will it take? Okay, if, if, I, if I start acting faithful today, if I start acting out and acting like God has all these things for me, how long is it going to take for my answer to come? That's something that we would ask, wouldn't it? That's something that I would ask. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to step out now. Uh, I'm, I'm going to speak it out, and I'm going to act it out. So how long will it take? Mike, tell me. A day, two days, how long will it be before my answer will come? Well, you know what? That's part of what faith is. We don't know when that answer will come. All I can do is tell you that it will come. We don't know when that answer will come. But I will tell you this. Don't grow weary in well-doing. Don't grow tired while doing the Word of God. Because if we do the Word of God, if we say what the Word of God says do, then I promise you that God's promise will come. I want to give you one more illustration. And God just gave this to me this morning, so this is hot off the press. God spoke to me this morning. He said, Mike, how many times did it take Joshua and the people to walk around before those walls fell? I thought, well, God, isn't that some kind of illustration? Are you telling me that, that we sometimes get almost to our answer and we stop? He said, that's exactly what I'm saying. You're catching on. He said, tell the people today that, that some of them right now have been around the walls six and a half times. That's what he said. He said, some of them will be listening to you today, and they're ready to give up. They're ready to walk away. And they're at exactly six and a half times. Tell them to go another half turn and watch the walls fall. And if you'll allow me to, the verse in Joshua I want to talk, talk, talk about, and I'm, and I'm going to close. Joshua 6.20 says this. So the people shouted when the priest blew the trumpets. And it happened when the people heard the sound of the trumpet. And the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat. It didn't say the wall cracked. It didn't say the top block fell off. It said that the wall fell down flat. That's what it says. Then the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. So what I want to tell you today is that, you know, many times we'll take the first lap around. Okay, God, I've made a huge sacrifice here. I've, made, I've been around this thing one time, and I don't even see a crack in the wall. Where are you, God? 
Okay, I'll go another lap. So then we get around the thing twice. Okay, I've, I've even fasted now two meals. I've been, I've been around twice, and God, I still see no sign that you're doing anything. I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting a little tired here. So we go around a third time. Okay, I'll just go the extra mile. We we'll go around a third time, and we still see nothing. Well, by this time, we don't show up next Sunday because we're mad at God. So the preacher really got on to me, so I went out Monday, and I went, in, I went ahead and four blocks. I, I, did, I went ahead and done the fourth one, and can you believe I did not see a thing? Five times, six times, coming around the six and a half. God said that many of you here today are six and a half times. If you go to the seventh, you won't see the sign of what I've done until you complete that seventh turn. And the Bible says that when we see the seventh turn, not only will the wall crack, but it'll fall. And not only will it fall, it will fall to dust flat on the ground so that you can take your shoes off and not worry about picking up the spurs from the concrete. That's what he said. So I believe that God's calling us to step out. God's calling us to go ahead and push through. There are promises that God's made to you, some of you for years and for years and for years. And that the thing that is stopping you, you still go through the motions. You, you, want, you want people to think that you're okay. And if, 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 you, if you don't come to church, then you're going to get a phone call. And that's the last thing you want. So you come to church and hope and pray he gets out at 12 o'clock. And here it is 1210. If he don't hurry up and cut off, I'm going to have to go ahead and step out now. So you did come. But you know what? If you just go ahead and step out. Just, just go ahead and let the chains fall off. I, I love the song that we sung this morning. See, he's a chain breaker. God wants to break the chains. He doesn't just want to loosen the chains. He wants to break them. He doesn't want to just take the top layer of the block off. He wants to go ahead and make them fall flat. But he's waiting for you to step out. See, God don't have to have you do anything. But God wants you to do it so that you'll receive the blessing that he's got coming to you. It's going to be the act of obedience, the act of stepping out, the act of speaking out. Go ahead and talk like it's done. The Bible says, you say, well, that's faith talking. Oh, no. We should talk faith, shouldn't we? We, we? we serve a big God. If we serve an unlimited God, we can go ahead and talk. We can go ahead and say, you know what? God is the God of the impossible. What he says that he will do, oh, you know what? He will do it. And then we can go ahead and act like that I'm going to live for a long time. I'm going to go ahead and step out and say, you know what? When the doctors told me I was 18, they said, uh, they told my, my stepmom and my, and my dad, they said, go ahead and take Mike home. He needs to draw Social Security for these last three to five years he's going to live. All that did was add fuel to my fire. When I got home, I called my boss and said, okay, when am I supposed to show up to work? He said, I'm sorry. I think you're supposed to be staying home. I said, when am I supposed to show up to work? And so here I am today because I stepped out and I spoke out and I didn't take what the doc, these well-meaning love doctors, I, and I still go to them every six months when I can. I love them, but I speak more the, the, the voice of God than I do what they say. Because I really believe that God is the God of the impossible. I, 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 really, I really do believe that. And then I'm going to start acting like it. I'm going, to, I'm going to get in the pool and swim a few laps. I'm going to jog maybe three miles in the morning just to prove my point that God is the God of the impossible. So I'm going to act like that I'm going to live to be 200 years old. Because I believe that God is going to do what he said he would do. You know what? When God is through with me, I'll be in heaven. The doctors asked me, he said, well, Mike, if we don't put this defibrillator in you, this is August of 16, if we don't put this defibrillator in you, what are you going to do? I said, I'll be in heaven. Next question. So, So we need to act like that God's in charge. We don't need to operate in fear. That's what faith is not. Faith is not fear. Faith is believing that all things are possible. Faith is believing that you can do all things. Faith is believing that the abundant God loves you enough to give everything you need, have desire of. He said all these things will be added to you. So I want us to stand this morning. Come on. And I want us to, I want us to see our faith arising. I want us to see our belief increasing today. Those things that you, that you really are praying for, those things that, that you want to see in your life, I want us to see, as, as Jordan sings this morning, I want her to sing the chain breaker. I want, I want us to, to see us stepping out and acting in faith. I want us to see, see ourselves speaking and talking like that thing is already done. 
I want, I want us to see ourselves acting out. Just act like it's already done. What would you do if that thing were, if I were telling you that it's already done, I just got a phone call and it's done, how would you act? That's what you need to do. Yeah, that's what you need to do. Act like it's done. I may do a cartwheel here. Okay, I won't. Just raise your hands to God this morning, to the Lord. Father, Lord, I pray for an increase of faith this morning, Lord. We should not be stifled by what we see. We should not be hindered by what we hear. Lord, we serve the God who made everything. We serve the God of the universe that can do all things. Lord, we serve a God that not only made it, but you put every deep, God, my eyeball is so complicated this morning, you put all that together. I mean, that's just one part of our complex being. So Father, you are awesome. And God, why should we doubt that our situation that seems impossible for us is too big for you? Father, increase our faith. Lord, may our faith go through the roof today. Take off the ceiling, God. Lord, we're not asking you to change. You said you change not. You're still the God. But God, we've got to believe that you're the God of all things. We've got to believe that you are the God of, of, of unlimits, of anything. So, Father, I pray today that you cause us to have faith. And if that has spoken to you today, if, if there is something that God's speaking in your heart, come stand with me right here, right here at the front. Come on, come on. I believe that God in these last few moments wants to pour something out to you that you didn't come here with. I believe God wants to send you out of here today changed, changed by the power of God. And if that's you, come stand with me right here. You, you, you're, you're actually taking a step of faith right now. You're stepping out right now. God said that you're stepping out right now. God is here to meet you. Just raise your hands to the Lord. It's coming from God this morning. It's coming from Him. It's all from Him. Just raise your hands toward heaven. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Sing that chorus, Jordan. Oh, if you got pain, He's a pain taker. If you feel lost, He's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you've got chains, don't believe that. He's a chain breaker. Come on, sing it again. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way. Shaking Savior, if you've got chains, he's a chain breaker. One more time, come on, sing it. Well, if you've got pain, he's a pain taker. Take it, Lord. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking Savior, if you've got chains. He's a chain breaker. I think you're getting it one more time. Oh, if you got pain, he's a pain taker. We believe it, Lord. Oh, if you, you feel, feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. So, Father, as we lift our hands toward you this morning. Lord, I pray that you'll break off every chain, every chain that holds these back, Lord, your servants back, every chain in Jesus' name. It doesn't matter if it's addiction, if it's thoughts, if it's finances, if it's relationships, if it's the past, if it's guilt, or even if it's the future. God, whatever the chains are that are holding these back today, Lord, I pray that by your spirit right now that you break every chain in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for our faith to be to, to just go through the roof right now. Lord, I pray for our faith to be unlimited. Unlimited in Jesus' name. That we not only believe that you're going to bring it to pass, but God, we see you bringing it to pass. And God, it'll cause us to step out. It'll cause us to speak out. It'll cause us to act out just as though that thing were being done right now. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that it be done. Whatever it is, all things are possible with you, Lord. 
All things are possible with you to those who believe. Father, we stand before you today. We believe. We believe. And God, I thank you that you caused this thing. We don't know the timetable. But Lord, I pray that just because it doesn't happen, it may not happen this very second. Father, I pray that we continue to step out, that we continue to talk it out, that we speak out. And Father, that we continue to act out, that we, that we continue to believe it, and that our actions show it and prove it. Because we have faith in the King of kings and the Lord of lords. The Father God that is the Father of every good and perfect gift, as we've read about in James 1.17. You are the Father of every good and perfect gift. So, Lord, I pray that thing. I pray unlimited benefits and blessings in Jesus' name. Everything, God, whatever is needed, whatever is needed, I pray that it be done in Jesus' name. And, God, you're not limited by ge geography. God, you're not limited just to win the 31522. You're not limited to 31520. But, Lord, you're, you're, you're the God of from here to California. You're the God of here to, to, to New Zealand. You're the here, uh, God, to, to, to from here to Brazil. You're the God to even Pennsylvania. God, thank you that you're the God of all these different countries. <laughs> you're unlimited, God. Thank you, Lord, you're unlimited. You're unlimited. Do you all believe that this morning? Yes. Yes. I believe with you. I believe that this week will be a different week that you've ever experienced before. Hold on to the Word of God. Do what it says do. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I pray you, I, I just pray you're blessed. I pray those things that you've been praying for will be done this week. I pray that God will, will show movement, that it'll, that it'll spark your faith. You'll say, wow, this is what God was talking about. This is what the Word of God was talking about. I see things. And God will just give you a glimpse of those things to where your faith is spiked as you act out and see that he's going to do those things. God loves you so much, and he wants the best for you. He will withhold no good and perfect gift for you today. Amen. Do you believe that? Thank you. Amen. 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 Lift your hands to the Lord this morning. Lord, I pray that you'll touch each one. God, that our faith will not be dampened when we step outside of this building, but God, that our faith will continue to increase to see you for who you are, to understand the magnitude of who you are, that you are the God of the impossible. Lord, I pray that sink into our spirits today. I pray may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you and give you his everlasting peace. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. God bless you. We love you.